All right, welcome to the, uh, what is it, September 25th, the Non-Creds V2 Working Group meeting. Um, super excited to uh, hear about Hyperledger Labs Agora, um, which is an implementation and more of an on 2.0. So Mike's going to present that. Um, we are recording the call for those that are unable to make it. Looks like I'm missing a Zoom link, which I'll add in a bit, in a bit. Um, this is a Linux Foundation Hyperledger meeting. So the uh, Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect. And uh, the Hyperledger Code of Conduct is in effect. We'd be good to one another, but you can read the details in that link. Um, I've got to add now to the re related repositories, the Angora, Agora um, code base, but we'll talk about that and we'll see how best to do that as part of this. Um, Announcements. First, anyone want to introduce themselves? Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh-oh, what have I done? There we go. <laughs> uh, anyone want to introduce themselves? I haven't been here for a while or just wants to just say what they're doing in the community? Sure, I can say hello back. Hey, I'm Hakan and... Um... Yeah, I work with Steven and some couple others like Anon Creds V1 specification. Uh, but then I changed my employer. Now I'm working for Accenture, but working for different uh, working groups, also in the Open Wallet Foundation and Trust of IP Foundation. Um, I am looking forward to listening about the Anon Creds 2.0 and uh, how it is looking right now. Awesome. Welcome back. Good to see you again. I've seen your name a lot. Uh, lately and wondered, I would, uh, hoping to catch up at some point. Likewise. Um, so, Stephen, I, I'll, I'll just say that I am not actively working on an on at the moment, but I, I sort of want to keep in touch with what's happening. So, uh, Good. Yeah. Good to have you back here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, other announcements to make the and on Craig's Rust, there's been a lot of updates being made to the um, implementation of an on creds. Um, here is what has changed in the um, 020 version. Um, we have upgraded to um, the CL signatures implementation, replacing Ursa with the and on cred CL signatures implementation. So that work is done. All of the updates that went into CL signatures, which were significant are in there. Um, uh, and then plus a, num a number of other cleanups and um, wrapper updates and so on for the JavaScript wrapper and, and so on. So that is available now. That was released last week. Um, and um, we're moving those into the various frameworks. It's lots of fun that, you know, CL signatures gets updated, then an on credits gets updated, and then the various repositories that include an on creds get updated. It does take a while for it all to move into the um, mainstream, but we're getting there on, on all fronts. Um, with that, I will turn over to the agenda and I will turn it over to Mike. I assume, Mike, you want to share the screen? I can, yeah. Yeah, please. Um, go for it. Yeah, so... Hyperledger Agora, Labs Agora, is a project where I, I wanted a safe place to be able to put all of my cryptography code that I've written over the years. Uh, a lot of it is for a non-creds too, but not all of it is solely for non-creds too. So there will be other cryptography code that I'm putting in there that has nothing to do with a non-creds too, but just in general. Uh, it probably could be used for non-creds like zero-knowledge proofs and stuff like that. But it doesn't have to be. So the two big ones I'm going to start with is this one that it's been out for a while called Unknown Order. This uh, is something that actually uh, the Anon Creds uh, Rust implementation could use. This is a wrapper around all big number libraries, including, and I'm about to publish this, uh, a constant time crypto big int implementation. But if you don't want that one, it wraps the GNU big num, open SSLs, and then the pure Rust one. And then obviously the fourth one is the cryptography, everything's constant time. So 
basically all you have to do is say which backend you want and away you go. You don't even have to worry about anything else. So you can try different things out for uh, timings and it doesn't matter what the license is because three of these are appropriate. The, the only one that has a pretty prohibitive license is the GNU one, but most of the time people don't care about that one anyway. All you have to do is just say what feature you want and away you go. So like for example, the CL signatures would needs a generic big number library. So you could just stub this in and say which backend you want. So if you're like the issuer, you probably want the crypto backend that is all constant time. If you're the verifier, you actually don't care. And so you may want one of these other ones just for speed purposes. And if you're the client, it probably it doesn't matter either. So away you go because there's no secrets once you have the signature. So that's the first one um, that I'll be putting in there. And why, this one is why unknown order, please. <laughs> oh, I get, came up with the name unknown order because basically when you're dealing with say RSA type fields or Pyre uh, encryption, whoops, uh, those require groups of unknown order where you don't know the order unless you have the secrets. So like, for example, um, and many MPC protocols, especially the ones that do assigning, they use Pyre encryption, which relies on a group of unknown order. RSA relies on a group of unknown order. CL signatures rely on a group of unknown order. So thus, I came up with the name unknown order because it deals when you have variable length numbers that are just incredibly large. Because if you're using elliptic curves, you don't have this problem. So this is purely when you're using things outside of uh, elliptic curves. The other reason is there's this new uh, class of cryptography called, well, I guess it's not new, but it's starting to see the light of day now, is called class groups. Class groups, think of them as they're, they're large fields, but you don't have to do any uh, pre-gen of random numbers or trusted setup or anything like that like you would for RSA or CL signatures. And so if you basically just say, I'm gonna use this class group and you're off to the races and they are considered quantum safe. So you could think of a way if you could do uh, CL signatures in class groups, then they are automatically quantum safe. So this, this library is also meant to facilitate that uh, research. Um, Pyre, Encryption, like I said, this is very commonly used in homomorphic encryption, as well as uh, like a lot of MPC signing protocols. So like if you want to do threshold ECDSA, most of the popular signatures rely on this, as well as some other uh, protocols. So that's another one. The main one you'll probably most be interested in is this one called Blissful, mostly because of the BLS signatures. This is a library that encapsulates everything you can think of in terms of BLS signatures, but it also supports every a lot of what you can use for a non-creds too, including accumulators, uh, and some of the short group signatures can just wrap this, which I will also be putting in uh, Agora. But the main thing that you will probably mostly be interested in is all the cool stuff you can do with it. So... It does all of the BLS stuff that you can think of. So say, signing, verifying, it, this handles threshold signing and recombining. It offers a few other features called Elgamal encryption and Elgamal proofs. This is like when you wanna prove you've encrypted a key share and without revealing what that key share is. So in many protocols, you may want to say, I wanna be able to prove I have a valid key share so I can sign, but I don't want to tell you what my key share is because that key share doesn't produce a valid signature by itself. So that's where this could come in. Uh, Elgamal proofs are also used for range proofs uh, if you want to do certain things with it. So that's where that's helpful. Think of verifiable encryption. That's what this is for. There's multi-sigs. There's also a signature proof of knowledge. Uh, so a very simple example of this would be if you wanted to do um, the verifiable credential 
and you just wanted to hide the signature, but nothing, but you know, you don't want to do selective disclosure or anything like that. That's what this could be used for. You could just hide the signature and the zero knowledge proof is incredibly small. It's only 96 bytes. So it's a very simple way to do that. Um, proofs of possession is just part of the uh, BLS protocol. I've also implemented sign encryption. So sign encryption is an operation where it encrypts the data and signs it as a single operation. And then when you go to decrypt it, it verifies the signature and decrypts it as one operation. So it's a really handy uh, feature to have. Uh, I labeled it time crypt, but it should be more accurately labeled identity-based encryption. So that's what this is. It was first kind of proposed a simple scheme in the time lock encryption paper, uh, but it's really just identity-based encryption. So all of that is in here. The other cool thing that is in here is this is a wrapper around um, the Intel's Blast library, as well as the raw Rust implementation that I've heavily optimized. So you don't have to worry about having a super fast uh, BLS library. I also expose the raw curve implementations, but basically what you can do is um, given the certain features, by default, it picks the nice blast one, which is all assembly code. Uh, but if you can't use that one because of you know certain architectures you're targeting, because blast only allows x86 and ARM, if you're going to anything else, then you might just need the optimized Rust version. So that's what it's for. So this hides that away from you so you don't need to worry about it. I try to just pick the best one for with the architecture that you're going for. So this is a really fast BLS uh, 12381 library. So that is necessary for a lot of the short group signatures and the accumulators that are used in a non-creds too. So you can literally just call this as a dependency and implement the other stuff, which I will do, and it will go really fast. And as you can see, the license is already permissive, which is really good because it'll be this will all be going into Agora. This is already open source, but it's I'm donating it to uh, Agora. So anyway, that's those are the three main ones uh, to start. I mean, there's obviously going to be a lot more. Um, this is another one I will be donating. It's called Gennaro's Distributed Key Generator. This this can do it for any elliptic curve. Uh, this is a distributed key gen. So if you wanted to set up some nodes where you distribute the keys among a bunch of different nodes and then have signing operations, then uh, it's all built in there and it's pretty, it's robust. Uh, Hart Montgomery has reviewed this, who, you know, the CTO of Hyperledger. So it's, it's received a semi audit, not from an official third party, but a lot of cryptographers have looked at it and the same with this one. So they've already reviewed it. Um, the next thing that will be I will be donating is let me get it here is this one, which is it's labeled credentials exchange, but I'm going to be breaking it apart into the individual components. This has the Poncheval Sanders signatures. This has the accumulator that can be used for revocation. This has the verifiable encryption. This has range proofs. It has all of it for a non-creds too, for you to play around with and try things out and uh, handle various things. So all of this will be in Hyperledger Agora. Um, I'm happy if people take a look at it and offer feedback. And uh, then we can hopefully move the spec forward. So the reason I want to break it into individual components is that way they can each be audited separately and uh, improved individually, which helps kind of with, uh, you know, agility in terms of like one might be vastly improved while it, without affecting the others. Um, Oliver Sanders, the uh, one of the authors of the Punchable Sanders signature, which I I think is what we should use for non-crits too, but BBS Plus can also be used. He's uh, offered to audit this Rust implementation and also help me write the IETF spec for it.
And then after we get the elliptic curve based one out, we will move on to the quantum secure version of his signature that he presented at crypto just a few months ago. With that, uh, any questions or comments? Um, first question for me. Um, you mentioned in the CredX there was the PS signatures in there. Is the BBS Plus signatures as well in there, or is that to be added? And there's a, a that'll be added. The spec was changing a lot, so I wanted to wait till it kind of settled down before okay. I touched it. Okay, but it will be in there. And the idea there, just to be clear, is um, you will use the implementation and implementation. You're not doing an implementation or something like that. You're you're going to bring in a, a dependency of BBS Plus and just make use of it. Is that correct? Well, Hyperledger Agora. I'm going to write one and put it in there. It'll okay. Be, it'll be it'll be an implementation. The other goal of Agora was to not be Rust specific. So if someone wants a .NET implementation, I was going to write one. In fact, I already have like three companies willing to pay me to do that for .NET as well as Golang. So there will be Rust, .NET, Golang, and Java. So native versions, not like thin wrappers around Rust. So, they, so the wrappers around Rust is the easy one. Going 100% .NET is a little more difficult, but that's okay because they're paying me to do it anyway. So uh, that's just how it's going to work. Okay. So the you know picking a, a specific language, programming language implementation shouldn't be a bottleneck anymore, which was one of the problems that we had with Ursa. Okay, uh, other questions from others? It's a lot. So, so Mike, Michael, I think uh, last Eurocrypt, I think this BBS, uh, there was an improved BBS plus signature presented, which I think is going to be standardized, which only has, I think, shortens the signature. So I, I think it gets rid of, instead of three elements, it just gets it down to two elements. Mm -hmm. uh, are you like, are you planning to sort of put in that one? Because yep. I mean, it's, curious, it's very new. I, I think it's just last year of crypto. Yep. Yeah, that'll be in there. There's some improvements okay. that Oliver Sanders has for his signature as well. So okay. I'll be putting it in there and then standardizing it at ITF. So okay. the goal is we'll have two implementations, right? Whichever people are more comfortable with. The reason I like the Ponchevel Sanders signatures is two reasons. One, it the math is simpler on it, and which enables threshold signing a lot easier. Like to do BBS plus requires some complex uh, protocols to do threshold signing, whereas Ponchevel Sanders does not. And two, there is going to be, well, it, there already is, a hot swappable uh, post-quantum version. Whereas for BBS plus, no such alternative exists. I see Hacken's got his, sorry, I butchered yeah. that. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, so there is an implementation of BBS plus also coming from Meta, but my current knowledge or my latest, uh, when I checked it, it wasn't able to do predicates and it wasn't able to do non-correlatable holder binding, like link secret, like binding. Is the one that uh, you're working on for Anoncrits 2.0, will it tackle these issues as well? Or is there any kind of limitations here as well? No, well, predicates can't be done by the signatures anyway. So that that's not an option. Holder binding is a separate problem. Um, but I can make it very easy to do, yes, because the idea is it's going to be open source. So, you know, polar binding is a popular demand, so why not add it? But as oh, far as predicates go, the signature doesn't support that other than selective disclosure. Right. Okay. You have to group it with other stuff to do predicates. Okay. You throw that's what the credits out. library was. That's what the credits library does. Okay. Okay, so BBS plus underlying the CredX library gives us predicates and the other zero knowledge proof features you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone get that? <laughs> so um, the BBS plus library or, or um, standard that's been uh, specification that's been defined does not 
include support for predicates, but including it in the CredX library gives us that capability. And that is that what I'm understanding? Just just to be clear. Yeah. Yeah, you have to glue them together. Exactly. Basically. And and PS signatures is the same, correct or not? Well, it gives you the yes, it gives it's the same as BBS plus, but right. You don't have as many restrictions as you do with BBS plus. Okay. All right. The security well, proofs are better for it than BBS plus. Like right now, the, a lot of cryptographers are telling me the BBS plus security proofs are actually broken. And maybe one more question, probably not relevant to your library, but uh, in general for Anoncrits 2.0. Um, there were attempts to also consolidate or bring add-on creds closer to the W3C VC data model. Um, I think it's also still an ongoing uh, effort, but wanted to ask like, how does it uh, console with uh, signing these claims individually, which is not really a part of the uh, VC data model itself per se, because it has like a container for the content itself, for the verifiable credential content, then there's like a proof that signs it all. Uh, is is there any kind of roadmap for it and how, how we want to tackle this? Well, to me, the VC data model is just that. It's a data model. It's just a data format. So you can encapsulate it however you want. So in my mind, there, there should be a simple mapping from saying in a non-crids too, this is how we sign the data. And, in a, and then if you want to go to the data model as like a, a transport format or a presentation format, here's how. Yes. Should play really nicely. I've, I've freed up a lot of... Uh, <laughs> um legacy crap that we used to deal with. So it so, will be more or less like an abstraction layer, uh, VC data model to transfer yeah. data. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, that's how I see it. Hakan, I don't know if you've seen what we, what has been done. We, I always use the term we, but I really mean the work Andrew did in mapping it, but basically um, it, it just literally moves JSON elements around. It, it is JSON LD. Um, we can, um, <laughs> gotta stop putting my thumb up in front of my camera. Um, uh, it, it, um, does not do the end quads, um, handling. It simply, um, uses the elements of the JSON in, in select ways. Um, but then, then puts the proof, the overall signatures into the proof section and does it in a way that you can add multiple proofs. Um, so you can have it a non-creds proof and a, you know, a, a, a data integrity proof with a NIST signature um, on, on the same credential. So that's the approach there. And while I've not seen yet um, the non-creds two um, credential and what it looks like, the anticipation is it's exactly the same, that we, we simply move things around. Um, yep. We have a plan right now. We use um, oh shoot, what's that term? Ah, I'm forgetting the term, but um, that allows you to just say uh, anything that's not um, defaults to JSON LD. So you've got a way to do it, but also to add a specific context. So if you don't have a context for the credential um, itself, um, you can use the vocab. I believe it's called. Um, so that it picks them up as undefined in a JSON LD friendly way. Um, but if you have an actual context that's possible, it, it, the plan is to provide a way that a, a non creds issuer can define a context for the credential itself. I so see. I think that should be covered. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. I'm planning to add implementations of like, you know, the post quantum signatures like dilithium and kyber so that we can just have it in one place. Because there's implementations all over the place. And I'd like to have it as part of the Agora project as well mm -hmm. so that uh, we can do, you know, 
key exchanges and other things as part of the non-cred. So it, the idea is that Agora will be a one-stop shop for all your <laughs> a non-creds to needs. But I'm also working with some other cryptographers on some other um, protocols that are going to be really cool. One of them is called Bingo, which was actually proposed for one of the MPC uh, post-quantum algorithms. It is what they call an asynchronous verifiable secret sharing scheme. So once I get that in place, you won't need the Gennaro crate per se anymore. It's basically a one round DKG, which is really cool. Um, Mike, you mentioned the Gen Gennaro, um, but anyway, the MPC related code. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Is is Allosaur part of this code base or is it separate? Does it lay on top of this? Um, oh, Allosaur it will be an implementation, yeah, on top of the Blissful library. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. And if you want, if you don't want to deploy any of these yourself, I'm working with a company called Lit Protocol that is doing basically the MPC as a service. Right. So they they will be offering the Poncheval Sander signature as a service, the Allosaur as a service. And they build in all of the authorization rules and stuff. And then all you have to do is use your standard ECDSA or ED519 signatures to talk to them. Okay. So. I've got another question. Shoot, keep going. Anyone else with questions, comments? Oh, I know what it was. Um, Blissful contains some, um, uh, reading from the Angora comment, Agora comments that were put in from, from the reviewers, the, the lab stewards, there's some, um, places where you've included, um, fixed or extended versions of existing libraries. Do you yes. want to mention that? Oh, sure. So... Uh, the was the Zcash library has the pure Rust uh BLS twelve three eighty one, and so I've obviously extended that with um like some of products, um hash to curve stuff and some other optimizations, and some formatting so uh you can pick whether you want big Indian or little Indian whereas uh. Zcash one, you get one choice. I also have, you know, convenient hex formatting and that kind of stuff. I have already submitted that as a pull request to Zcash. And in talking to them, they said it'll probably be at least a year or two before they can even merge it. So thus, that's why it's out. Yeah. The other one is similar optimizations to the Filecoin library. That's the Blast one. So same implementations, but um, it brings it so that both the Rust one and the Blast one are identical. And thus, that's what Blissful uses. So I can go between the two without having to worry about it. And the Filecoin said, well, we're not, we're not going to merge. And I have a PR to them. And they said, we won't merge it until Zcash merges theirs. <laughs> so yeah. I'm two years out from either of those. Thus, once Zcash merges those, then I can just archive my version, but it's going to be at least <laughs> a year, maybe two yeah. before that happens. Okay. So that's all it is. Okay. Hi, Mike. Uh, there's a question for me. You mentioned uh, you mentioned the name multiple times. Maybe I, I missed the beginning of the a meeting you you mentioned Adora project so Agora so yeah like like the old Greek Agora you know uh, Agora so yeah. what, what what it is and what should it uh, encapsulate is it under Hyperledger or yes. you know just what, what is Agora Hyperledger Agora is a new labs that uh, I just created under Hyperledger so ah, the, okay. the, the same benefits that Hyperledger already provides so is is it um is it something like is Agora a non creds two point or is it something? It's not different? just a non creds two, but it will have a bunch of primitives for. It'll have basically all the cryptography you would need for a non creds two. 
Ah, okay. So I can think of it somewhat as a Ursa. Is that right? It's it's a better version of Ursa in my mind. Because uh, Ursa was originally designed to be the cryptography library for all of Hyperledger, which at the time was a good idea, but I was the only uh, implementer of it and kind of maintainer for a while. And so it kind of died out. I had to disappear for, you know, to go make money somewhere else. And then I've just been coding a bunch of cryptography libraries on the side over the years. And earlier this year, I had a company that tried to sue me to take some of those libraries from me. And I thought, well, you know, I mean, we were, I was able to get it dropped, but um you know in talking with Hart Montgomery he said well why don't you just create a labs project here at Hyperledger and then you can donate all of your cryptography there you can still be the principal maintainer of it but then obviously the Linux Foundation owns it and so no one well they'd have to sue the Linux Foundation to take it and I was also wanting it so that if if I disappear for whatever reason other people can still be maintainers of the same code so people can have higher confidence in the libraries that it's not just, you know, a single developer. I mean, it'll probably be me, just me for a while, but I see Andrew Whitehead's on here and he's always got fun things to say about my, my awful code. Just kidding. Um, but that way, you know, others it's open. They can feel like their contributions will be, you know, not just for me, but will be towards a higher purpose. So the, the idea of Agora, you know, was, you know, if if you look in Athens, there's a bunch of those what they call open forums for people to come and contribute. So the the mission is different than Ursa was. So Ursa, nice. like I said, was meant to be the cryptography library for all of Hyperledger. This isn't. This is just meant to be like an open forum of cryptography libraries. And you know, I tend to collaborate a lot with academics on cryptography code, and so. I've got two that I want to work with um, and I'll put them in Agora as well. One of them is like a nice, it's called silent threshold decryption. So you'll probably see that one coming out for Q1 of next year. Again, I see. It's, it's a one round threshold decryption system, which is really cool. And it's supposed to be quant post quantum as well. So what, what I'd like to see, and we'll see how this goes, but my goal is to, um, uh, you know, build on the CredX component of that into an anon creds too. So that's again, right. to, to remind people what, what anon creds too is the flexibility, um, the, the existing capabilities, the existing um, flow. So from a high level, um, you are doing more or less the same things, um, but using, uh, getting more flexibility and more capability. So the big things are you're getting the underlying signatures, the PS and the BBS plus in particular that we're, we're interested in. Sounds like out of the gate, we would have PS. Um, the objects are the same. Um, there's a schema, there's a cred def, there's a, credential, there's a presentation. Um, so all of those are, are the same and the interactions are the same, but what the extended schema, the biggest, the, the most impacted um, object is the schema because it provides, um, it includes more information. Like uh, for those familiar with um, an on credits, the schema is simply just a list of attribute names. Now it will have um, details of, of how those attributes are formulated, um, rules around you know what they can contain, and because of that, enable um, the flexibility and the signatures underneath, and then uh, as well in, in um, added um, zero knowledge capabilities, so things like range proofs and so on. So the encoding is defined and and allows us. <clears throat> allows us more capability. So the idea would be um, with this code in, in a, or available, um, we as a community can start building on it to create an on credits to an implementation of a first draft implementation of an on credits to that um, ex uh, 
that exposes these capabilities. So that's what we're looking to do. Um, and, and so what I'm hoping is we can build on this. Mike is currently in the process of transferring repositories. Um, so that'll take a little bit. I don't know, a, a, a week or two, Mike, is that accurate? I hope, I hope one of the people at Hyperledger was gone. Sean would know when he's back, but um, I know he was out last week. Yeah, so we'll get, uh, Mike will get those transferred over, um, a review and sort of um, will occur. And then my hope is that in around IIW time, we can start to put together a plan that says, okay, here's how to move forward in, in getting there and what other pieces would be around it. Um, a big piece obviously would be to do um, a, a revocation and how that will look. So we mentioned Alisar. Um, Andrew's got a, a revocation scheme that, um, and uh, what I'm hoping Andrew can do over the next while is sort of see how it might mix with CredX and, and in an on credits 2 capability. Should be able to, because yeah. my mind, an on credits 2 is all about, uh, you know, just building blocks, right? You just structure yeah. them the right way. Yeah. So Allosaur is just one revocation scheme. You could use the list, what is it, 2021 or whatever it is, revocation yeah. list. You could use that one. You could use his. It doesn't matter. Whatever yeah. suits your purposes. Nice part of Andrews is it enables both um, this 2020 and um, and this would or, or would allow it um, fairly easily, I think. Okay, any other questions from anyone? Yeah, just uh, to add on. Uh, so, so I take it that uh, I guess the, these underlying crypto libraries, they, they don't assume necessarily a single revocation scheme, but uh, that would nope. be something that's going to be decided on the CredX library implementation. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, CredX, CredX is basically where you pick your revocation scheme. Agora will just provide the various components. Yeah. So Agora is just going to be a suite of cryptographic libraries. A non-creds is where I see you glue those together. That way I can work with the individual cryptographers there that have created these components to standardize them. And they can also, and a lot of them have said they're willing to do the audits for free. So like, for example, Anna Lisinskia, the L in the CL signature, she's already kind of auditing the Credix library as I've got it right now. With with two PhD students. Yeah, that's a that's part of the work we're really going to want to see. That would be huge. With that, I can put my thumb up and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, Nothing. Everybody's doing it. Only when I don't want it to does it happen. Uh, one more thing, perhaps leaking out out of scope a little bit, but uh, uh, Stephen, you touch on the this like uh, extended schema. So uh, I guess uh, you know how is that gonna play with Indie Ledger? And I'm saying this is probably out of scope here, but uh, is this gonna be? You know, do you see this as an extension of the current Indie Ledger, or is are we talking about like Indie 2.0 kind of thing? So the nice part of it, I think, would be from a from a Indie as it is today, yeah, um, is it it has a, it, the schema still exists, but it has different content. And so my expectation is the implementation of it would be pretty straightforward. So the schema, the cred def are definitely going to have different content, but the same objects exist. I think Mike has a an extra object still that in his CredX implementation that um, I'm hoping we can avoid uh, just because of all of the, the um, change that it would bring. So um, Mike has the idea of a, uh, essentially a repository of attribute types. So a given name has these capabilities and then a schema is a collection of those attributes. But a schema, I believe in Mike's mechanism, can be standalone. It doesn't need to. It can be fully defined yeah, on its own. And so my thought for an indie implementation is you're, you're basically going to have the schema. You're going to have the cred def. Just they are different um, implementations. And that should be pr a pretty easy 
um, modification on Indy just to say, oh, this is the two, you know, the V2 version. I believe there's versioning on both schema and GredDef. So um, both of them would be a fairly simple step. Uh yeah, I designed it to be backwards and forwards compatible. So if you need to go from 2.0 back to 1.0, that's a very simple thing to do, but you will lose some of the yeah, you know, fancy stuff. But if you're bringing from 1 to 2, that's a very simple transition. Yeah. But it but it goes both ways. Um it took I'm, a lot of thinking to get that. <laughs> I'm curious what the BBS uh, proof issues you mentioned, if you could add in. Um, so well, just, uh, yeah, so Definity just said the, the security proofs of BBS are broken and need to be redone. Now, what are the implications of that? They said, well, we don't really know what that means. They just said no one trusts the security proofs currently. Does it mean uh -huh. anything? They don't know. Sometimes there's just weird security proofs that like, I mean, all the security proofs do is help us give assurances of, hey, in these specific scenarios, it's it's supposed to be secure. Mm -hmm. uh, could we add BBS plus the BBS group maybe? A, well, if you have them, they're, the, Finity, the Finity cryptographers are hard to get a hold of, but specifically like Manu Drivers and Jans Groth are the two that I talked to. Okay. So they're the ones that said, yeah, they're broken, but we don't know if that really means anything. So I'm just wondering if another this is for the draft because working on. I don't know if they will. I asked them to, but, the, you know, Defendi's super busy. <laughs> but they can just throw out statements like that. That's yeah. not good. That's not playing well in the community, I wouldn't think, but okay. No, it's not. I asked them if they had a paper coming and they said not unless someone pays them for it. But they won't they won't touch it. They said the closest thing you can see is uh, a paper that they wrote in 2020 uh, that has Jan Kamenish as one of the co-authors. They talk about a little bit of it in there. I'll see if I can find it. I think it's like the ePrint 2020-016, I think is what the number is. Okay. And uh, then the, I mean, the illegal issues on, on his repositories, you think that's all resolved now? Is it specific repos? The only two that were that were under they were trying to take from me was blissful and the Gennaro one, but those have been that all the legal issues have been dropped. Okay, is this were they just claiming it's work for hire or? No, they were claiming they were claiming that um, because I was doing contract work for them that and I was because I was working on those on the side, even before I went to do some contracts for these folks. They were claiming that because I was contracted for them, that all work was theirs. Right. Okay. And yeah. The lawyers were able to say, well, it wasn't even part of your core business. And he had these prior and he can prove that he worked on it on a separate computer that was completely unrelated to a, what he was doing for you. So ultimately that's what it came down to. All right. So they can't they can't claim something I already had prior to working with them, but they tried. And so to prevent that from, you know, or to hopefully prevent that from happening again, that's why Agora was created. Um Mike, thinking of ePrint on the PS um lattice work, post quantum work, is that a <laughs> 2020 ePrint? Is that the document for that somebody was asking me about that is there anything more recent is that what they presented at crypto and that is Park? what they presented at crypto let's see it's 2022 um, some something uh, yeah give me a second i'll see if i can find it okay so that, that's the um 
post quantum version of the PS signatures. So what Mike described as hot swappable in the implementation he has, um, you could get post quantum, um, a, a post quantum signature on, on what we're looking to have for a non creds V2. Yeah, the name of, uh, let's see, it's 2022-509. Yeah, that's the one. Thanks. They have a major revision. It was part of the crypto proceedings. They just oh. presented it. So they have a revision related to the crypto proceedings. Yeah, well, because obviously they get feedback. Yeah. Is but, that they, but, it's, but it's in the, but it's in the, like, if you go into the one at ePrint, it even says this is the revised one. So it's, it's fine. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Thank you. They updated it. Yeah. Got it. So that, that's the one that I plan to implement after we get PS signatures standardized. Right. Cause that'll just make the lattice work that much easier. Cause we can just say, this is just the same thing. We just change the underlying math. Yeah. And hope our key sizes don't blow up the blockchain. Yeah. Really. I don't know how well nine megabyte keys sit on blockchains. <laughs> yeah. Nine megabyte public keys. Well, that's what it currently is. And they think they've found a way to knock it down even more. So by standardizing PS signatures first, they can continue that research and hopefully make it even more efficient. Yeah. Now, when you say knock it down even more, nine megabytes to eight and a half or? No, they're talking about like cutting it in half. Okay, sounds so good. It'd, it'd probably still be in the megabytes, but we're talking like three or four megabytes versus nine to 10. Yeah. I mean, the signature sizes aren't bad. They're just, they're in the kilobyte size or yeah. even, um, I think the proof size was just like two kilobytes. So that's, so that's not bad. And the signature I think was 900 bytes, but the keys themselves are large. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, I think I missed a train here. What are these eight, nine, eight megabyte keys? Uh, where are the post, um, That's the, the post, post quantum, quantum version. So what Mike has got in the CredX is called PS Signatures. And um, the developers, the creators of PS Signatures have a post quantum version. And of course, what, what comes about with post quantum is much slower and much larger um, uh, elements, including the big one is the public keys themselves are currently nine to 10 megabytes. Yeah, the private keys are even larger, but those aren't published anywhere. Yeah. So it's usually not the problem. So but, uh, so, so you, you, you were referring to PS signatures, isn't it right? Uh, I'm not sure what is that either. Point Cheval Sanders signatures yeah. so um is there a uh, definitive paper for the um the ps signatures themselves mike that we should reference well the original one is 2015 um and, but then there's been three improvements to it since is there the, but is there one document that we should point people to if they're interested yeah Probably the main one. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, if you could find that, that would be helpful. You can send it to me after, but I would, I'd like to put it in the notes. Yeah, yeah. I think and the have it. People ask me about it. So, uh, Mike, I just wanted to. What about this BBS plus broken security proof? It would uh, help if there is any draft available. I mean, I'd like to see if. The assumption, are they challenging the assumption or the challenging the reduction? I mean, it has to be something to... Uh, oh, I know. Yeah, because, yeah, <laughs> because there was a recent Eurocrypt paper on, B on enhancing BBS Plus, so... Right. Yeah, I mean, I'd be very curious, I mean, what's wrong with it? Well, like I said, yes, if, if you trying have to get any... them to publish something, yes. and they said, yes. well, we already did, and I'm like, where's the paper? And they said, oh, it was that six, the one from 2020, and I'm like, okay, well... If you turn it around in there, I don't really find it. So <laughs> yeah, that that should be a that should get the best paper at any conference if uh, we have a, a decent break, right? So, yeah, I'm very curious. Yeah. But if yeah, we get a hand on something, maybe 
uh, you can circulate it uh, through. <coughs> well, I've asked for it. So as soon as I get it, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I tried searching on Google. I couldn't find anything. So little secret, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'm just publishing. I'm putting in chat for you That's all cool. the... Um, all the versions of the punch level Sanders signature that I've been able to use. Okay, good. So that's why that's why we wanted to standardize it, right? Because if you look, I just put four in there and he says he has another one coming. And so I'm like, okay, well, we need to standardize it because you obviously have found different ways to improve it. And then there's also the the post quantum one is 2022 509. Yep, exactly. Okay, excellent. Okay, any other questions? We're almost at time. That was a ton to go over. Thank you so much, Mike. Looking forward to it. And um, we will uh, definitely begin to formulate the plans. And um, anyone who's interested, please um, you know, let me know, let Mike know um, that wants to participate more in the evolution of this. Um, both from a spec and a implementation perspective. Um, if you've got interest, let us know. And with that, we'll wrap up. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thanks, all. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.